As an architect, I spend most of my days behind a computer screen, so it's important to me that every element is perfect. What's going on guys? My name's David Tomich, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking about the office tour and how it's slowly progressing and how it will progress in the future. We might as well get straight to the point and start with the peripherals. So from the keyboard and mouse point of view, I've just recently upgraded my keyboard to the brand new Logitech MX Keys. This keyboard has been part of my kit for about a month now and I can honestly say it is flawless. As soon as I bought the keyboard and took it out of the box, I knew it was a premium quality product because it was so heavy and so well built. I don't think I've ever had any piece of computer equipment that is just so well made. I've, it sits so well on the desk, there's no resistance against the table, so if you push it, you have to push it quite hard for it to move, which means it's always in the perfect spot. The keyboard in itself is almost silent, which I absolutely love. Personally, I don't like a mechanical keyboard, especially when you're working in an office with somebody else because it is the most annoying and frustrating thing in the world, being the person next to the person with the mechanical keyboard. Mechanical keyboards are all well and good and they're super satisfying, but I just genuinely love a good keyboard that is ultra quiet and ultra minimalist. The one thing I love about this Logitech keyboard is the simple fact that it's interchangeable between operating systems. So yes, I use a Windows computer here, but at the same time, I use a Mac computer at work. So if I ever wanted to, I could easily pick up this keyboard, take it to work and have no problems whatsoever trying to figure out where all the keys are. Now this keyboard is also charged with USB-C, which is absolutely phenomenal. I love that everything's moving to USB-C and it's slowly becoming a uniformed cable system. Now moving on to the mouse, I still use the MX2 master mouse and not the MX3. I only purchased the MX2 a couple years ago, so it's still very new for me and it's still doing a phenomenal job. I don't think there's enough of a justifiable reason to swap from the two to the three unless something goes wrong with your two. So for the time being, the MX2 is absolutely phenomenal. Unfortunately, it isn't USB-C, it is micro USB. So it is a secondary cable of charging, whereas the MX3 is USB-C. So that could be a sway point for you if you're looking to upgrade and stick to that one cable system. I genuinely just love this mouse for the simple fact that it has the ever scroll functionality. You can just sit there and scroll that wheel and it will just continue to scroll for pages and pages and pages. I think I tested it once and it runs for about 15 to 20 seconds straight depending how much force you put into the spinning of the wheel. And even though that's not the be all end all of tech, it is a really cool feature and it's something that I do miss when I use a different mouse that doesn't have this feature. Overall, both the keyboard and the mouse are super ergonomic, they're super comfortable. You can sit behind the keyboard for hours and hours and use the mouse all day long and your hands won't get sore. Moving on to the screens and probably what is the most important part of any computer setup and any office tour is my two 27 inch ASUS MX279H monitors. Now both of these monitors are a little bit outdated and I'm not gonna lie, they're not the best thing money can buy right now in 2021, but they are still phenomenal monitors. I purchased one originally, I had just a single monitor set up, but it didn't take me very long to realize that I needed a second monitor to actually be able to do my work effectively. So I use a two 27 inch monitor setup right now in 2021. I am looking for a potential swap out for 49 inch Samsung monitor, but I'm just not sold on it yet. So I'm sticking with the 27s for the time being. The two monitors behind me are full HD with IPS eye protection. And even though they're full HD, you wouldn't think that they are full HD. I've used monitors that claim to be full HD and they're very blurry and pixelated, whereas these two monitors are still very crystal clear and very sharp. The monitors don't have an excessive amount of ports at the back. They are predominantly HDMI and DVI cables. There is sound input as well, but there is nothing special. There is no USB-C in these monitors. There's no USB-A. They are just your standard run-of-the-mill monitors from going back a few years now. As you can see, the monitors are backlit with LEDs that I purchased off eBay. I genuinely just got the cheapest, nastiest LEDs I could find when I started this YouTube channel to see if it would go anywhere. Two years down the track, we're slowly growing this community, so thank you so much for being here with me along this journey. If you're new, smash that subscribe button down below because every new subscriber encourages me to keep making these videos and publishing content for you guys. The LEDs are very simple and very basic. It would be my personal preference to run them in a cool white color. 
However, the white setting on these LEDs is a little bit blue tingy and doesn't look very good. So that's why I keep them on the blue light itself with the contrasting orange lamp in the corner. The LEDs themselves are incredibly messy. They're incredibly ugly. So I'm very glad that they're stuck behind the screens and against the wall because there is no way you'd want to use these LEDs anywhere that are visible. I think LEDs are slowly phasing their way out, but because this is a rental house, I can't do much this space. I can't paint, I can't put wallpaper up. I don't want to put sound panels up because it will destroy the walls when I leave. So I'm just trying to absolutely make the best space by using color and creative decoration more so than actually changing the environment. Because if I had it my way, trust me, this space would be a lot different. What you'll notice is unlike many other desk tours, there is no speakers on this desk because I personally don't require it. I think the monitors themselves have a phenomenal sound and for those moments that the monitors aren't good enough or I don't want that blasting sound directly in my face, there's a small Google Home Mini that I genuinely just use for playing ambient music throughout the day. The Google Home Mini is fantastic. It's such a small, powerful little device. I have a number of them spread out throughout the home and they do interconnect when you want them to. So overall for like 50 bucks or whatever they are, they are phenomenal. I don't personally think I need a Google Home Max or anything in this space. Everybody's talking about how you need the biggest and best and loudest speakers, but genuinely I don't think they're required. I think when you're working as an architect and when you're working in any professional environment, you need to be able to concentrate and focus. And if you have blaring music, at least in my opinion and in my instance, it doesn't really help you concentrate. So having a small speaker that provides that audio but isn't overpowering in the same time is absolutely perfect for this space. The speaker sits on a very industrial looking lamp that was purchased from Kmart for about 20 bucks. It isn't very fancy, it isn't very special, but it does exactly what I originally intended it to do. So the purpose of that lamp was to create an orange backfill on this illuminated background so that the blue and the orange complemented the tones. I love the fact that this globe has the wires and the electricity running through it and heating it up. It makes such a cool little effect. I think there's, there's a number of things I could have put in this space, but I'm happy with that lamp. And it does actually get used at nighttime when I just need a little bit of additional lighting and the lights in the room just aren't enough. For a decoration piece on the side, there is a small little fake plant and also a candle that was also purchased from Kmart just to really tie the scene in. I do really love nature and I do love indoor plants, but unfortunately this room doesn't really receive too much attention and it doesn't receive too much sunlight. So having a plant in here would quickly and rapidly die because it's the back of the house, it's on the south side and it would just get very cold and get no light. So unfortunately I've had to settle for an artificial plant in this space. Nonetheless, it still does look pretty good for I think I paid $12 for it. So it isn't an expensive addition, but it is something that just ties the space back in. Now, what about the desk? The desk is obviously pivotal. I haven't purchased a sit-stand desk in this situation for a very simple reason. This desk behind me is your standard IKEA Limnon desk with a couple cheap legs from IKEA as well. It was custom trimmed by my dad, who I'm very thankful did the job for me to fit this room perfectly. If you notice the little trim in between the two desks, there is two side-by-side -side Limnon desks perfectly cut for this space. So if you take out one of the desks, it is millimeter perfect, which means if I was to go ahead and put in a sit-stand desk, either the desk would have to reduce in size or it would be constantly scraping the walls and damaging the walls. I have a sit-stand desk at work. I don't use it often enough to be able to justify bringing it into the home. So I think that having just a really good, really wide and really long desk is beneficial in more ways than having a sit-stand desk. Above the desk, I have my degrees in architecture because, well, what else do you do with a very expensive piece of paper? On my right-hand side, I also have one of my largest achievements to date, Why Watches, which was a company I launched back in 2016. It was phenomenal and pivotal in my career and taught me so much, so I will always treasure that piece. Underneath the desk, I have two very important things that get used nonstop. Obviously, the first is my custom-built gaming PC. I custom-built this myself a couple years back and it was built to be an architectural rendering machine. It had all the latest and greatest tech in there at the time, but it's slowly become outdated and it's slowly requiring more and more upgrades. So originally it was an i7 processor with 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of storage. That storage wasn't SSD, so I slowly started upgrading the SSD storage to one terabyte, two terabytes, and slowly working my way up. 
I also recently upgraded the sound card as well as the graphics cards on the device to be able to keep up with the growing demand of architectural requirements in all software. At the current time, I still think this computer isn't powerful enough to do what I actually want to do. It's still very laggy, it's still very glitchy, especially when editing 4K video and trying to do multiple overlays in Premiere Pro, which shouldn't actually be that hard considering it's able to render 8K images of incredible scenes relatively quickly, but it wasn't custom built for video editing, it was custom built for architecture. If you follow me on Instagram, there's a link down below, you'll see some of the renders and some of the work that I do produce as an architect. Underneath the desk, there is also a very important, very basic piece of kit, and that is the shredder. I won't go into any detail with that, it is a basic shredder from Officeworks, I think I paid 100 bucks for it, but you have to destroy any private documentation properly and securely, so that's why the shredder is down there. It is kind of ugly, kind of in an awkward spot, but it's behind the desk, it's under the desk, it doesn't really matter too much, so I'm happy with the spot and it works phenomenally well. The last piece in this office tour is the chair that I'm sitting on. This chair I purchased many years ago when I was still in university and it was the first chair I bought as an architecture student and I'm reluctant to get rid of it. It's worn, it's dirty, it's not the best chair in the world anymore, but it's still somewhat comfortable and I just genuinely love it. I think I paid an absurd amount of money for it. It was something like $400, but it was the only gray chair at that time I could find and it's still one of the only gray chairs that you can buy. So I don't think I'll be giving away this chair anytime soon. I'll probably get it cleaned very shortly and I'll continue to use it every day. It is super comfortable, it's perfectly adjustable, and it's nothing special, nothing fancy, but it does the job really well and it ties into this space perfectly. I think no matter what space it goes into, a nice gray chair in any environment will always work really, really well. Anyway, that's my entire office, guys. I hope you enjoyed the office tour. I hope you got some inspiration from it. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below or leave a comment if you want to know more. If you're new to the channel, I post a video every single Monday. So as always, I'll see you then.